Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we are going to be taking a look at solid state drive from Corsair and it's the new Neutron GTX drive. Um, this is kind of the, the top of the range of their solid state drives at the moment. They've made a few changes as well um, because what they've done is they've, they've changed the controller on the drives. But um, we'll, kind of, we'll look at the, uh, the drive itself to start off with. Now if you've not seen one of these, I'll just bring it up close because at the end of the day, it is a solid state drive. There's not a massive amount to look at. But if you look around the back, take close notice to the edges. Now the reason why I say take close notice to the edges is because generally with the solid state drives, and I was looking around to try and grab one, and sod's law I've not got one to hand, that's loose. Um, generally the solid state drives, they've kind of got a, uh, lo like, uh, almost like a forge, not forge, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a cast kind of case. It's metal but it's quite thick. Now this is, uh, the only way I can explain it is it's like, just like a stamped single layer of metal. It's like a sheet of metal that they've stamped to form a shape and then they've put like threads and stuff in the side. So it's a lot thinner, it's only 7mm thick. Now solid state drives aren't exactly massive in the first place or heavy, but you can feel that when you hold this one, it is a lot lighter and it does feel kind of tinnier because the material that it's made out of is so much smaller. Perfect for very skinny like notebooks, ultrabooks, stuff like that where you've got a very very small um, area to be able to put the drives in. Now I've not had a lot of experience with uh, like laptops and netbooks and stuff like that where a solid state drive hasn't fit in but for them to have moved on to a 7mm thick solid state drive that obviously has to be out there. Um, I would have thought though that most of you are going to end up using this in a desktop which is where we've done most of our testing. Now I've got the kind of the, the sheets because when they send out products, they do send us out reviewer guides to kind of talk to us or to explain the new features and stuff like that. And this has, like I said, got the new um, uh, the, the new controller on it. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to find the, the controller is a Link A Media Devices L A M D L M eight seven eight O O six gigabytes uh, solid state drive controller. Um, now, trying to look through, basically, essentially what they've done is uh, with um, Sandforce, Sandforce, um, it, it got a bit funny with files that were compressed. So things like um, your ISOs and some like game files and stuff like that. When you try to move those about on a, on a Sandforce drive, your read and writes would drop quite significantly because the Sandforce drives worked on compression in the first place where they did compress your, your, your stuff. With this, there is no compression. Um, so one of the things, it, you know, instantly, that it, when you are moving or copying, reading, writing, whatever you want to do it, files that are already compressed, so you could be talking about massive RAR files, like I said, your ISOs, anything that requires it being put into a package and being made slightly smaller, um, this won't be affected by that. Now, you may find it a bit strange, I have got loads and loads of uh, uh, results and graphs and all that kind of stuff, which you can go to, I will put a link underneath the video. Um, but I can pretty much explain this to you, just kind of word on word, I may chuck in an atto result at some point. Um, but they say that it's designed for multitasking, multitasking. it's got uh, really high read and write IOPS. Uh, uh, that is true, although to be able to read IOPS properly, um, it does get a bit complicated. IO meter, a lot of people love it, a lot of people swear by it. I've never really been a big fan, never really been a big fan. Um, I never, no matter what rig I've got on, I've never been able to get consistent results either. So we kind of phased it out a bit and we did start using Anvil. Anvil is also great, but it's also still in the development process as well. Although with this drive, we have got some fairly good results with it. Um, and essentially what this drive is, is uh, it's like an enterprise spec drive. And by that I mean it really comes into its own when it's doing multitasking. And in that I'm, I'm kind of saying that what, uh, if you're doing lots of things at once, then that's really where it kind of like starts to pull ahead from uh, more of the other drives. With the IOs, I actually noticed that the more you kind of upped the IO queue or the queue depth, whatever you want to call it, the more this drive kind of pulled ahead and ahead and ahead and ahead. 
in IO meter, the most um, amount of IOs I managed to squeeze out of the drive before it started to tail off a bit uh, was about 92,000. Um, now I know that's all very dependent on the block sizes and everything like that, but just to give you a kind of idea, because a lot of other drives, they kind of, they do hit a peak and then they just kind of tail off. But this, you can carry on adding more and more tasks in the background. Um, and it, it kept thriving on it, basically. Um, and they do say it's reliable and durable, consistent over time. Because of the uh, LAMD's e-boost and it's like error correction and, and the NAND management and stuff like that. So there's a lot of kind of like, basically, like their own kind of gump to try and big it up. Now, the stuff with like using it over time and things like that, we can't really test. It's down there on paper. But without me using this over like a six to 12 month period, there really isn't anywhere I can go with it. One of the things that it does say is it's capable of up to 551 meg uh, sustained read and then 511 meg sustained sequential write. Now I can confirm this plus a bit really because uh, I've actually seen a 562 read and around 516 to 520 at the absolute tail end write. Um, now, this is where the kind of comparison bit comes in, and this is when I can kind of talk to you uh, about things, because you essentially want to know IOPS, read and write, and how quick is it really in real life. So, 562 read, and we'll go with uh, 516 write. Now, the writes are actually a little bit lower than the things like the, the Kingston HyperX, uh, the Intel 520, and even the old uh, Corsair that was based on the Sam Force. Uh, the Force 3, like the basic Force 3, not the GT. All of those were kind of 540, you know, 535, 540 plus uh, writes. So this does, you know, fall down a little bit with the writes. But something I did notice with this drive is the, the write speed actually picks up a lot sooner. Um, because depending on the size of the blocks that you write to the drive, they're a lot lower. And say for argument's sake, in Atto, you get really, really low writes because you're writing loads of tiny little files. And then as the file sizes get bigger, the write, the write speed goes up. And when you end up getting to like eight megabyte block sizes, you're then talking uh, about uh, five, 16 um, mega second. But the thing with the uh, Corsair is, I found that the, the write speed actually starts to peak a lot sooner than the other drives. So it's a lot further down, you know, a lot smaller block sizes, it actually starts to ramp up quite a bit. And for quite a significant amount of the, the graph time as well, the writes are actually faster than the reads, which is quite cool as well. Um, so we've had that. So I can confirm it's doing, like I said, over in my testing, what they, they say on their bit of paper. Normally you're kind of hunting and searching around. Pretty much everything that they said that um, it could do. I looked at the results and it was like, yes, it's doing that, yes, it's doing that, yes, it's doing that. The only one that I had issues with, uh, as I said, was IO meter, and that's basically because I hate it. I should really spend more time and find out what the issue is, because it's probably a tick box somewhere. Um, but everything that they, they were shouting about, uh, it, it basically is absolutely spot on. Like, pretty much, it's like they've tested it on my rig. But, this is something else I wanted to say to you about. As you can see behind me, although it's off, I've got the Rampage 4 Extreme. Now, when I first test this drive on the Rampage 4 Extreme, the results were ghastly. Tried different drivers, tried putting it in RAID mode, IDE mode, AHCI mode, didn't like it. None of the results, the writes were really, really low down. And I thought it was a dodgy drive. And then I chucked it in the interim rig. And, oh my God, did it make a difference. So... I'm not saying that this drive isn't compatible with the Rampage 4 Extreme. What I'm actually saying is there's something about my rig at this current pro moment in time that doesn't like any solid state drives because I had to. I then tested other drives and I wasn't getting consistent writes. So I've, I had to test it on interim. Um, so one thing I would say is uh, kind of as a, a going forward note, if you are having problems with your rig, it may be a driver issue like with this or... I may have uh, a slightly <laughs> more underworld problem with the, um, with the chipset or something on this board at the moment. It really is going to take some looking into, but 
I'm going to start by putting a completely fresh install on. Start with all completely new drivers, and before I start putting like all the games and stuff on, I'm going to start running some solid state benches. Um, because it has worked really, really well in the past, but obviously, as we've added loads of different graphics cards in and that, and maybe a Windows update somewhere along the line has, you know, shafted it or something, but that was, you know, we did have an issue with that. So it's just me kind of trying to expand and trying to give you a little bit of knowledge in the background of what goes on some days that it's, it wasn't this, it was actually the rig. Because as soon as I swapped it onto the interim rig, just to put it into context, the, the rights more than doubled instantly. And all I'd done is plugged it in, click, click, ran the, the benches, and it was just bam. And that was actually being run with me doing all stuff in the background as well. I know it's a separate drive and, you know, we've got ample CPU and everything, but it wasn't just a, you know, a static kind of rig or anything like that. So my thoughts on this... You can get this, and I, I don't normally shout about uh, like a specific retailer or anything like that when I do these reviews, but it is available at Aria for 199 quid, and it's a 240 gigabyte drive, which is currently Corsair's you know headline kind of top of the range solid state drive at the moment. So you're looking at well under a pound per gigabyte. It's completely nuts speeds. Um, uh, I know it's a new controller and stuff like that, so people may be a little bit nervous, and it, you know, but it's, I would say, it's an absolute Billy Bargain. Um, it's also why we decided to give it the OC3D Gold Award, um, because as I said, it does everything that it says it should do on the tin. It's not got the compression issues that the Sandforce would do. It's also nice to see uh, another controller coming into the market as well, because obviously you've got uh, OCZ using their Ida Linux or whatever it's called, um, uh, controllers now because obviously they bought them out but we don't really care about them anyway you've got all the other mainstream uh, companies pretty much sticking with Sandforce at the moment Sandforce really you know kind of pushed it Corsair have taken this brave um, step and like I said they've gone with the and I keep having to um, read it because I can never remember how to get it but uh, where's it gone Link A Media Devices I can remember the LAMD bit. I can never remember what it stands for. Um, so, yeah, that is the uh, the Neutron GTX 240 gigabyte. Uh, this is now going to become a staple part of my uh, test rig. I'm going to be moving this straight onto my test rig. So this will be going on in the not too distant future. Um, so I can see if we do get any other issues or uh, anything to go on with it. It also means that when there's firmware updates and stuff like that, that I can uh, you know blast that straight on as well. Um, but from what I've seen with this, would I advise you to buy it? Fucking damn straight, I would. Uh, especially for 200 quid. I think that, you know, it's up there with the best of them. Um, so, to summarise, the rights are slightly down on some of the other drives that we've seen. Um, Corsair 520, Kingston HyperX, even the, uh, the original Force 3 had slightly higher peak writes, but something I did notice with this drive is that the, the write speed did come on a lot sooner with this drive. Reads, it's an absolute read monster. 562 peak read speeds. Um, and uh, another thing is, is that the more things that you do try and get this drive to do at the same time, the more it does kind of come into its own. It is an enterprise, enterprise spec drive, you know, being brought into the kind of mainstream kind of enthusiast market. It's built to last. It's got a five-year warranty. Uh, Corsair SSD warranty is pretty high as well, although I have to admit I've never actually seen a Corsair drive personally die. But from the few people that I know that have had issues for whatever reason, they have been looked after really, really well. Um, so I don't really think you can ask for much more for 200 quid. So it's thoroughly, thoroughly well worth the OC3D Gold Award. Uh, I'm going to move on now. I've got plenty, plenty to get on with, as well as a couple of cheeky, kind of funny things coming on. I know I've not been here for a little while, but you're going to be getting flooded with videos from me over the next few days. So, this is, grabbing his remote, Tiny Tom Logan, with another video for you. Making sure he's got the remote the right way up. Out. <laughs> 